Hello and welcome back. I'm Sean with Bacon and Games, and this is the fourth video in our Snake Code Along series. If you're just joining us, there are links to the previous videos in the description down below. So far, we've gotten our snake moving and able to eat food added by our spawner node. In this video, we'll implement our tail pieces so that our snake grows each time it eats a piece of food. We'll be keeping track of these tail pieces with an array and we'll be iterating through that array each time the snake moves. Let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna to need to do is add an array called snake parts. You may recall that in an earlier video, we decided to make the head and tail classes inherit from a base class of snake part. That's going to allow us to store those together in this array, statically typed as snake part. In GDScript, you can mix different types of objects together in an array, however you won't get code completion. For example, with this being a statically typed array, if I try to access a member of our snake parts array, you'll see that I'm getting last position and move to suggested with autocompletion. That's because we've told Godot that everything that's going to be in our snake parts array will be a member of the snake part class, which includes both our head and our tail. Since both our head and our tail are area 2Ds, we could statically type this array as an area 2D. However, we won't be getting our last position and our move to functions. We could still call them, but Godot's not going to help us with code completion. And if for some reason we put something in that array, maybe accidentally, that isn't of class snake type, then we're going to fail when trying to call that method. Statically typing things in this way is both a quality of life thing but it will also make our code more readable if someone else tries to come in and understand our logic. With our snakes part array in place, let's hop over to our spawner and create a function that will handle spawning our tail pieces. In a larger game, we might have one spawner for our food and one spawner for our tail, but since our game is fairly basic, it's going to make sense to put both of those responsibilities into this one spawner class. In order to spawn our tail, we're going to need a reference to our tail scene. Our spawn tail function is going to be fairly simple. It's going to take a vector 2 that represents the location at which we want to spawn our piece of tail. It'll instantiate, move the tail piece to that position, and then like we did with the spawn food, it's going to add it to our parent. If we go back over to our gameplay script, we can scroll down to our onFoodEaten method and use this to spawn a new tail piece. Again, we're choosing to defer this call because we're adding a physics object. Coming back into our spawner, you'll remember that the spawn tail function expects a vector 2. The location at which we want to spawn our new piece of tail will be the last stored position for the last item in our snake parts array, which will look like this. Snake parts array Snake parts.size gives us the length of the array, and we're going to subtract one because the array is zero relative. This will give us the last element in the array. Since we've added a new tail piece, what we'd like to be able to do is type snake parts dot push back and then add our tail piece here. Unfortunately, we have two problems. One, we don't have a reference to the tail piece that we've just created. We could set up our spawn tail function to return the piece of tail that we've created, but that would pose another issue. Since we're deferring this call, the tail piece that we'd like to add to our array won't exist until later. However, that's not a problem. We already have the tools to fix this. Let's go back into our spawner class and add a signal called tail added. And we're going to give it an argument of tail because when we emit this signal, we're going to send along a reference to the tail piece that we just created. We can add that down here by typing tail added dot emit and give it tail. Coming back into gameplay, just like we set up a connection to the heads food eaten signal, we can do the same here with our spawner tail added. And we'll call it on tail added. And now let's declare that function. We know it's going to receive a tail object, so we can add that as an argument. 
And then all we need to do in order to add our tailpiece to our tail array is take this and move it down here. We want to add the head to our snake parts array because the first tail section needs something to follow. Did anyone spot the mistake that I made? If I scroll down here to our spawn tail call, we're mistakenly passing in the snake part object. What we want is the last position stored within that snake part. Now, if we test our game, you'll see that we do get a new tail piece at the last location of the head. However, if we continue eating food, all of the tail pieces are going to appear in the upper left hand corner at zero zero because we haven't started updating those locations yet. Let's do that now. In our update snake function, right below where we move our head, we will loop through our snake parts array, starting at index one, which is the second index or the first tail piece, calling the move to function on each snake part element in the array, passing in the last position value of the previous element in the snake part array. With these two lines of code, the first tail piece will follow the head and all other tail pieces will follow the tail piece that precedes it. Let's test our game and see if our tail works. Now that we have a working tail, we need to be able to crash into that tail. Let's go back into our head class. Since there are only two things that we can collide with in this game, food or the tail, if we've entered the else condition, that means that we've collided with a piece of the tail. To notify our gameplay class when a tail collision has occurred, let's create another signal and emit it down here. Once again, back in our gameplay class, we need to tell gameplay to listen for this signal. Down here, we can declare this function. As a placeholder, let's just print out game over. Let's test this out. We doubled back on ourselves and got our game over message. To make this game a little more challenging, let's increase the speed each time we eat a piece of food. Since we set up this speed variable at the beginning of the project, the only thing we have to do is increase that each time a piece of food is eaten. Let's do that by adding 500 to our speed each time we eat a piece of food. And if we test our game, You'll notice that the stake speeds up a little bit each time. Earlier in the video, I promised that we would come back to our tail class to add some code specific to that class. Let's do that now. Right now, there's nothing here because the only code we're using is being inherited from snake part. Let's add an export variable that's going to contain an array of textures that we can randomly pick from instead of always spawning an apple as our tail piece. You may notice that since we've added this export variable, our textures array has shown up in the property inspector. We can click on this array and add elements to it. At the beginning of the project, we imported six different textures that could be used for our tail. Right now, we're only using the hard-coded apple. We can fix that with this texture array. Let's add six elements and drag our six sprites in. And in our ready function, let's randomly assign a texture to our sprite 2D from our textures array. Pick random is a built-in method of the array class that will return a random element from that array. If we test our project now, we should get a random sprite each time we eat a piece of food. Now our snake is moving more quickly with each bit of food and the tail is looking a little bit snazzier. 
I think that's going to do it for this video. In the next video, we'll build our start menu, our pause menu, our game over screen, and our HUD where we can show the score. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you learned something, please consider liking or subscribing to help me reach more makers like yourself. Until next time, be kind to yourself and be kind to others.